You know what I've come for. This is the way. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Hello and welcome back to the Pod Awakens, a Star Wars fan podcast. As we do our road to the book of Boba Fett, we are on what exit number four, I guess. <laughs> However many of these we've done, Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi, originally known as Revenge of the Jedi, until about a few weeks before they released it. Uh, for all the fun facts out there. And then they turn it into uh, Revenge of the Sith. So yes. interesting yeah. little parallel there. <laughs> yeah, and what what's cool too is like the Revenge of the Sith logo looks like a bit. It kind of reminds me of the Return of Revenge of the Jedi um, one a bit. But uh, yeah, title changed in eighty December of eighty two. So about five months before the movie came out. So interesting. I'm sure uh, they had all sorts of promo. And yeah, they did. Like, I have a what? They poster. changed it last minute? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, really, that just helps the, cre- the collector market, doesn't it? It's like, oh, now that revenge stuff is super rare. I got to get it, you know? They're like, um, man, I could make a fortune off of this promo uh, little picture that I yes, downloaded. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You know, I don't think they were stole. downloading anything in the off the street. There was like a little <laughs> flyer promo. Yes, <laughs> I yes. cut it with an exacto knife. And... Well, people used to go into like theaters and try to like buy that stuff, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, people still do it. I've yeah. tried to do it for specific things. And... No, really. You go. You're like, I need that out well. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's actually it. Yeah, yeah I nice. wasn't a big fan Nailed of the it. newest movie, but I was like, yeah, uh, if I could like talk someone into buying that huge promotional banner i will take it uh for the right price and the guy just kind of was like oh yeah we're, we're great i don't know i'm assuming that most of the people that actually work at those places probably take, take that stuff yeah, for themselves the and it, yeah. sell it <laughs> yeah. yeah they're the ones that are on ebay selling that stuff yeah, he's probably uh, like, dude, experience. I already got yeah. that dibs on that, man. Yeah, he's like uh, Chadwick down the street. Uh, he's got that. So yeah. we uh, we don't need your input. Sorry, uh, you offered 20 bucks. But <laughs> um, but yeah, my name is Jordan. And I have my cousin Brandon here. My name is here. Brand Gone. So uh, Gone. we are doing the Pod Awakens podcast. And we are discussing Boba Fett's journey on the way to the Book of Boba Fett. We are currently going yes. to talk about Return of the Jedi, not the Sith. It is the Return of the Jedi. Yes. Uh, Luke Skywalker comes and redeems himself for his failure in the previous film. He looked like quite the little uh, pansy as he got his hand cut off by his father. Uh, he goes, no! And it's really <laughs> dramatic. And he falls, presumably to his death. Uh, only to be saved by his now Force-sensitive sister, Leia. And Jordan... That's where we left off. Yep. Dive into it. That's where we left off. So when we're when we're opening here, and I want to get your thoughts on just Return of the Jedi as a whole real quick, because I feel like... I feel like everything comes back around in circles. I remember growing up... This was... Okay, so growing up, I had, you know, like Phantom Menace on uh, DVD... And an old, like, library copy of Re- Return of the Jedi, okay? and Or, like, a... not Maybe not a library, but, like, a... It, it had, like, the case that was kind of reminiscent to Blockbuster, but it actually had the, the cover on it. The like, nice, it had a real cover. case. Yes. And it has that, uh, like, texturized... Yes, yes. Uh, f- you know, plastic piece. I know exactly what yes. you're talking about. I had yeah. something like that, and uh, I... So if I wanted to watch Star Wars, my only options were the DVD of Phantom Menace or or this Return of the Jedi. This busted tape. DVD of and that Return tape, of the Jedi. And that tape was actually not even the special edition. It was like the pre-special edition VHS. So, um, 
Oh, so you had like the old Palpatine yes. where he Oh no, this was the same you Palpatine. You can barely even tell what he looked like though. That was in Empire. Yeah, Empire we had the the fake Palpatine. Different okay. different actor with like the big like eye or whatever. But Okay, the big um, eye. See, that's what I'm thinking of. The thing that's different in this is like the the musical number in Jabba's palace is different in the special edition mm -hmm. and okay. some other things I don't recall. Um like the end the end scene didn't have like when they're doing the celebrations it has different music and it didn't have like coruscant and naboo and like all those planets that you see in the special editions yeah but what i liked about so i had those two and then eventually at one point i remember pop up got me the trilogy on vhs so then my options you know were four five six special editions or this return of the jedi it's not special edition or phantom menace on dvd <laughs> those were like my options uh, so you have the so original original trilogy in two separate ways and then we have phantom menace so that's yes. always a fun time um <laughs> yeah so those were my options back then that was before attack of the clones came out and what i always remember is you know for me i grew up with ewoks defeating the empire and then now when i grow up i hear people that were you know maybe our parents age that maybe did not like Ewoks or that were older than our parents and didn't like Ewoks. Um, you know, and, and hearing that in like how I met your mother, where they're talking about how Ewoks suck or whatever. And I'm like, I didn't think that was a big controversial thing, you know, growing up watching this movie. And I, I wonder, you know, how, pe but then it seems like it kind of came back around again where people are like, no, this is great. So like, you know, it, it kind of goes in those cycles sometimes. Um, the way Pokemon fans usually say it is like, okay, Gen 1 comes out and people are like, this game's great. Gen 2 comes out and people are like, oh, Gen 1's the best. Gen 2 sucks. Gen 3 comes out and then it's like, Gen 1 and Gen 2 are the great. Gen 2's not so bad. Yeah. 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 Gen, Gen Furthermore, best, Gen and now we're at what? Like Gen yeah. 10 and it's like, oh yeah. man, Gen 2. Oh yeah. Yes. You know, it's always it's in the, the cycle same of, sort of like when Gen 8's yes. out, people hate Gen 8. They start liking Gen 7 again and they think gen 6 is underrated and then next time it'll be gen 9 sucks gen exactly. 8 is actually so, good and gen 7 is underrated <laughs> kind of goes in this loop if i'm gonna kind of bring your point to fruition yes what you're kind of saying is that the ewoks were the jar jar of the phantom menace and then now we have jar jar He's really not so bad compared to Anakin acting like he hates sand in two. And then we're starting to hate even Wookiees and Yoda in three, Revenge of the Sith. But then uh, the stuff in two is not so bad. And, you know, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so I, yeah. I was just wondering your thoughts on Ewoks and, and, and Return of the Jedi as a whole. So I think you had a great point where it is a situation where people are just going to hate this stuff, especially older people when you're sitting there expecting to go into something and you're like, yeah, this should be extremely serious, uh, especially following up Empire. It was a very serious film, probably the most serious and dark of the Star Wars franchise, maybe until like Rogue One, but um yeah, I feel like people will kind of just hate on whatever's new and what might turn out to seem kind of kiddish. Even though in the original film, there's childish elements in it as well, especially with the droids and the Jawas. I mean, if we're going to compare things, I mean, the Jawas and the Ewoks are very similar, kind of in stature and comedical tone. I don't. I have no personal problems with the Ewoks. To answer your question very simply, and to shut up, but I have no problem with the Ewoks, and I think that they should have a break by now because we've seen a lot of worse things from the Star Wars franchise over the years. But uh, yeah, uh, I think most people's complaints are probably the fact that they're able to defeat uh, the stormtroopers and stuff. But I mean. Well, obviously, but the whole thing is they've been living there their whole lives. Right, I don't think terrain. they necessarily yeah. set up these traps specifically for the stormtroopers. As I look at it, it's traps they set up to capture their food or whatever, just kind of living off the land. 
and these stormtroopers kind of came into a spot they kind of uh i guess under they had like low expectations or they underestimated their surroundings you know? and that's kind of uh that's kind of in the movie when they catch luke and han and chewy in them uh, in a trap as well so exactly um, yeah i don't think it was necessarily a thing where they're like oh yeah we're gonna destroy the stormtroopers they kind of just prepared for the inevitable or inevitable uh quest to even just get food i don't think it was right. like them trying to destroy the empire <laughs> Well, let's let's dig in deeper into the movie. So we open with the second Death Star. Uh, Darth Vader arrives onto it, and you know we get the Imperial March and all that good stuff. And uh, you know the the second Death Star looks a lot like the first Death Star, a um, little bit incomplete, right? Which um, may be a design choice. As we'll kind of debate that later on. Oh, yeah, I was ready to talk about that right off the bat, actually. We can if we want. I was thinking a design choice as in, you know, the Emperor's plan is to make them think that it's not operational to then fully say the station's operational and start trying to defeat the rebels That's on Endor. Great point. Yeah. I was just kind of thinking to myself, how does this thing work, though? Because it's not enclosed so is there like a barrier around it kind of a force field uh how do people breathe how is there gravity uh, <laughs> just questions that were running through my head while watching the scene i was like now that i think about it on a real level <laughs> i think i think there are spots in there where it is enclosed um I, I that's my thought is that there are certain spots in there that it's enclosed enough where they are able to, um, you know, stand and walk around. But I think that um, that's always the question I kind of have about building the Death Star as a whole. Anyway, is like, how are you? How do they do this? How yeah, are you, you building think this? It's like an astronaut that yes. has to have like the thing on his back to keep him, you know, kind of stationed I suppose. yeah how, how are you building yeah. it and how is it uh you know because it seems how like it'd be a real pain could you actually yeah you would need like a hundred some stormtroopers to build this at least minimum uh unless they're using the droids around. i guess they could be using droids they could be outside. using droids yeah. that's a good point that's a great point but uh yeah i don't know that was a question running through my head while i was watching that opening sequence I was yeah. Like, how in the hell is this getting built, and right. how are people staying inside? But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we kind of <clears throat> jump over to R two and three PO walking in the desert. They approach Jabba's palace. They enter the palace, and we get Bib Fortuna welcoming them. And you know, R two plays Luke's message, which you know he wants to bargain for Solo's life, and he offers the droids as a gift. And I totally understand why Luke would not tell the plan to three PO. Right, three PO is a loudmouth, yep. but I just constantly love how much three PO gets thrown off by all this stuff. He really has like in every movie. I feel like there's this moment where R2 knows something 3PO doesn't and 3PO is just totally thrown off by it. And he just totally buys it, right? He immediately buys like, oh, you must be playing the wrong message. And then when it becomes true, he's like, well, I guess <laughs> Luke gave us up. I yep. guess he gave us up. He's not thinking like long term, but R2. He's like, I, I guess we're still here. Plan, yeah, exactly. you know? yeah. He has no uh, opinion of getting out of the situation. He's kind of just like, all right, ex I'll accept my fate now. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. That's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I agree. It's probably my favorite opening sequence. Maybe part four uh, is a bit better with the uh, sequence of Darth Vader boarding the ship. Oh, but yeah. I would say Return of the Jedi has one of the best opening sequences of all of the films. It's just so comedical and also it leaves the audience in question of what is going on and it it just brings them in immediately see i do like it. this i like this more than hoth you know i, I do i do, too. I do. And, well 
some of us do like Hawk, but yeah, uh, uh, you know, I think this drops I'll us admit in. this I is think, better than the opening to five. I think this drops us right into it, and I think it really gives. Um, I think it moves the plot forward more, you know, than than the beginning of <clears throat> Hoff, which seems like just a detour to try to get Luke to Dagobah and split up Luke from his friends is really what Hoff serves. I can agree. Of. This yeah. is more about reuniting those friends, right? And getting Han. And I think that's wh- how you had to open up this movie because of how empire ended i do have a lot more to say about this opening yeah go ahead. i have some critiques but i want to wait till we get there because okay. we're not there yet yeah i yeah. love a lot of stuff but there's a couple little things that i have to touch on once we get to the scarf i believe it is okay called. yeah so we get a party in java's palace here like the next the next day i guess um we get a rancor killing the dancer. Like, you know, the dancer falls down into the trap door. It's and classic. Everybody's laughing. You know, Jabba's eating this up. And so is the rancor. I mean, <laughs> I was going to say, I think uh, he's not the only one. But, uh... <laughs> um, poor, poor girl. Uh... <laughs> I have to say, I love Jabba's little... <laughs> gremlin buddy i the little uh oh, yeah, yeah. looking character he's kind of annoying to be honest but i love his design and also it was voiced by um the same guy that does the muppets and yoda Frank Oz. come right. on there he is jordan so you'll edit that so it sounds better uh he's vo- voiced by frank oz too so it's great i don't even think that's correct but oh, actually no he's voiced by mark dodson there you go there we go. So he's voiced by Mark Dodson. <laughs> Obviously, everyone knows Mark Dodson, and uh, yes, he was it's the, just a classic character from the Star Wars trilogy. He did some voices. Initial. He did some voices of um, in Gremlins and Gremlins Two. Did he really? Yes. But the little guy you're thinking of is Salacious Crumb. <sighs> That's his name. The little uh, Kowakian. Isn't that uh, monkey crazy lizard. though? You have to edit that correctly, Jordan. I went Gremlins, and guess what? He was from Gremlins. <laughs> look at yeah. that. I was like the little Gremlin-looking guy, and yep. would you look at that? He voices Gremlins. It wow. worked out. And I'm not editing I'm, that. I'm just a genius. I'm a filmmaking <laughs> genius. Sorry, Jordan. So yeah. don't, uh, you don't even have to edit that. You can just leave it. <laughs> yeah, we get a bounty hunter entering here. And they have Chewie as a prisoner. And we have Boba, you know, kind of watching from the side here. Um, and the bounty hunter is exchanging Chewie for uh, some money and is playing a dangerous game here. And, you know, 3PO's, uh, what's it called? Um, interpreting all of this. And, uh, you know, the bounty hunter pulls out a thermal detonator saying that's why I should get this much money. And, you know, they make a deal. Boba kind of gives like a little nod right after that. He's like, hey, that's pretty good what you did there. That's a tough move, dude. Yes. Yeah. Boba's like, mad respect. Hey, bounty hunter. Yeah, boys. he loves it. Yeah. Um, Meanwhile, it's a female. <laughs> yes, yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, we have... Uh, <laughs> After the party, the bounty hunter is sneaking around. They go up to Solo and thaw him out. And it's Leia. Of course it is. Um, She's and really, a bounty hunter. Yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine? Uh, <laughs> could, do, do you think people saw this coming? I don't think they did. But really, there's kind of the hint so. with Chewie being caught. Because that's exactly the move they pull in A New Hope. Where they yeah. pose as stormtroopers and, and they, they have Chewie as a prisoner. that he's coughed yes. and all. Yeah. Very similar move. Um, but I genuinely don't think audiences had a clue during their first viewing. Yeah, I would I would not think so. And if they did, they'd probably think somebody else other than Leia, right? So that was Yeah, they cool. probably think that was Lando. Right. If I right. took a guess, something. Because we knew Lando left with Chewie at the end of 
uh, at the end of Empire. Uh, Empire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Han is now temporarily blind. Um, and we get, uh, you know, I quoted this line as it happened, you know, uh, with the uh, Han asking who she is and she being like, someone who loves you. Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Thank you for telling me that, Jordan. I'm so glad that you said it out loud to yourself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know. Nobody cares. But uh, it's just a line that I know for whatever reason um, pretty well. Han well, I mean, is temporarily. this on multiple media formats. Yes. And yeah. different DVD, uh, array, special streaming. versions. I mean, yeah. This one, you better have it line for line. So. Well, I don't. I, that's like the only line. Uh, so Java is <laughs> Java is watching, and he captures them. And I, you know, one of my favorite parts about this, by the way, is I think it's Bib Fortuna covering up three PO's mouth in the background as yep. if three PO is going to say something, and as if covering a robot's mouth is going to stop them from talking. From audibly, yeah, exactly. Yes. Just switch them <laughs> off. Yeah, just pull like the circuits or something. I mean, uh, but uh, Boba's in the back, and we kind of see Lando dressed as a guard here, which I thought was, uh, you know, fun as we're tracking what what Boba's doing in this. He's kind of staying out of the way most of this opening here. Um, he kind of already did his job. He delivered Han Solo. He's kind of he got his payday, right? Or whatever he paid his debts depending on what the situation is yeah he's like i'm not going to create more trouble for myself all right so did you have anything did you have anything here that you want to touch on before we move on to the next part um you said opening stuff yeah it's mostly on the scarf is okay okay comment on but um i will say it was pretty interesting to see the (laughs) the different droids getting like disassembled and kind of like branded tortured? and all of, yeah like tortured you know what i'm gonna say that, and R2 watch it's like that know, hit me pretty insane. bad i'll say that i was like yeah. that one gonk droid who's like whining as his yep. feet is getting i was like oh that's so sad it reminds me of like my pets and then but, you know, the just, other ones are like watching and yes. it's like oh man this like puts that kind of into perspective they're terrified <laughs> And and the tr- truth is too, the droids are kind of like this, um, are seen as like pets almost, right? Like yeah. we we always liken R two to like a like a dog with his little Have wine. Open ship to how and how also, loyal yeah. how loyal R two is, stuff like that. Um, but so it's a little hard to hard to watch that. Um, one of my favorite scenes in that though too is when. 3PO is scared and he's going backwards and he makes almost the same pose as the protocol droid that is behind him <laughs> disassembled and he's like ah and he like falls ah. into it a little <laughs> yeah. bit yeah <laughs> that is a good one yeah it kind of reminds me of the stuff they did in uh attack of the clones where yes, he like yeah. starts to think that he's like the other droids a little bit you know <laughs> <laughs> and i really like this line coming back up again han is in a cage with chewie Chewie's kind of telling him the plan. Don't tell you know? me the odds or something. No, he says, oh. uh, you know, he hears Chewie say about uh, Luke calling himself a Jedi Knight. And he says, a Jedi Knight? He's like, I I get captured for a few months or whatever. And you, everybody's having delusions of grandeur, which is exactly the line 3PO uses to R2 <laughs> on Empire when they're chasing Boba Fett with, the, with Han Solo. You know, he's like, Telling R2, oh, you're having delusions of grandeur. That's uh, hilarious. So, you know. I did not catch that. It's That's a line hilarious. that I think is really only in five and six. But yeah. it almost feels like like a um, like one of those, uh, I've got, I got a bad feeling about this. You know, a line that's used in multiple movies and delivered by different people. That's kind of the vibe I got from it. Well, not only that, but it's really funny that throughout the entire, like, original trilogy, Han's always sh- on 3PO. 
Mm -hmm. and like kind of not taking him seriously and now he's repeating the stuff 3PO says it'd be funny like if he started like actually telling people the odds (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) you know that'd be funny but um yeah I never realized that that's a funny little tidbit there I didn't catch that till this time either you know I was like oh that's interesting because I I remember saying about 3PO saying that to R2 and I was like I really liked that line and then hearing it here I was like oh my goodness that's awesome that they brought it back and uh it would have been really funny if like you know Force Awakens or something later picked up on it too just like or even in the prequel or the prequels yeah Yeah. that would have been funny if 3PO said it all the way back then or yeah. Anakin originally said it in 3PO something. <laughs> Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan, you know, or Qui-Gon yeah. in episode <laughs> one when Anakin says... You're having he has delusions a, of grandeur. Yeah. <laughs> Anakin's like, I'm going to marry Padme one day. It's like, you're nine years old. You're having delusions of grandeur. <laughs> <laughs> that or like Qui-Gon says it to Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan yes. gets like frustrated by Mace Windu, like when he tries to jump up on the Naboo ship. Oh and yeah, then, and Obi Wan or uh, Qui Gon's just like, you're having delusions of grandeur, my boy. <laughs> and three Beard just hears it, you're having delusions of grandeur. <laughs> yep, and they just pass it all the way along. Yeah, make it the next. I got a bad feeling about this. Exactly. Um. All right, so let's get to Luke coming in here. Uh, you know, he comes in. He's all in black. He's got uh, his hood up it almost looks like he has a force choke to the gamorian i've also read that might be just a force push but you know the gamorian guy is holding his neck so it is weirdly shot it's also seemingly on purpose that yes. obviously you won't know who it is you might think it is a new sith character i think also i think you do know it's luke but i think they wanted you to think maybe he's gone to the dark side right yeah He's got the, kind of like a choke, we've seen Vader do that. He's wearing all black, taking after his dad. Now that you know that it's his dad, too, like almost like, oh my goodness, did he fall, too, type of thing. But also, I feel like they didn't necessarily set that up in Empire. At least well enough for anyone to truly believe that. I mean, they ended with him getting rescued by Leia. Maybe if he just got left on Cloud City, or uh, Cloud City. But, uh, yeah, if they would have done that, made him where he's kind of abandoned by his friends, perhaps I would have believed that. But the fact that R2 is like, oh, yeah, like Master Luke, uh, you know, sent us there. You know, 3PO kind of uh, re- like states exactly what R2 is saying. So I don't know. I don't think they really set it up well enough for me to truly believe he could have fell to the dark side. But Right. Nice little concept, but didn't work for me. Yeah, I think that's what they were kind of going for here. I think so, too. Um, But, yeah. But, yeah, Luke is going to fall. uh, You know, at some point here, he's going to fall and have to fight the Rancor. He's going to uh, kill the Rancor and, uh, you know, the the sad Rancor is upset that it's you know the beloved rancor is dead the fat guy that's in like uh the leathery yes. straps it yes. looks like he's walking right out of some uh interesting other type of film but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know it was odd to me but i i kind of got it it was like kind of a pet owner just the best relation i could try to make but i don't know got the guy himself was weird <laughs> yeah yeah it would take a guy like that to love a rancor that much in my opinion <laughs> um and they get scheduled for execution uh you know leia gets kind of put as his uh like replacing the dancer that fell and got eaten um <clears throat> they go out on jabba's like skiff or you know whatever you want to call it scarif i believe that is the thing maybe it's a skiff is that it i don't know uh sail barge okay so we're totally all wrong yeah forget it um anyway the skiff is on... what uh is what luke's on before he oh starts. it's the little thing yeah, yeah. see so we were kind of there not really though um i do have one little question for you yeah how did jabba fit a rancor on his 
sail barge, as we like to call it now. Uh, and how much was the Rancor weighing, and how much can that hold? Well, the Rancor wasn't on Java's the sail barge. And the Rancor was in the was in the uh, the palace. Tatooine hideout sort of thing. Yeah, okay. the palace. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're right. This is just them, like, taking his, uh, if he was taking his, you know, limo out to yacht. watch the yacht. execution. Let's, or the yeah. yacht, yeah. yeah yes, it's, more... it's the yacht, and then they the have, like, a little to go watch the execution. Yes, <laughs> got cool. it. So we have the Kraken eating the people on the sailboat, and he's on the yacht, kind of just chilling. Yes. All right. And the Very other thing is, pyramid. like, a, a temple or pyramid. Per se. Yeah, they just call it a palace usually. Yeah. Well, like, I'm just trying to put this in perspective for real things. But there's real things. <laughs> in the I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they go out on the skiff. They're at the Sarlacc, and this is where the plan really goes into motion. You know, you get um, Lando in position, R 2s in position, three POs. Like R two, what are you even doing here? Um, Who gives R two so, the little nod? The little yeah. Yeah. The salute when it's time to launch it. And I love here when, you know, Luke, just the confidence of Jabba, this is your last chance, you know, or you're going to die. And, <laughs> <It's like>, good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, they all die. And then it's they great. all die. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, you have R2 launching the lightsaber, which Luke brings with the force pull. He's going to light it. It's green, which is the first time in the well, order the best of thing release. Is, is that you can tell that it's a different hilt compared yes. to the other films too, because you always see that classic Obi Wan style hilt kind of throughout the initial trilogy. This one has this big old battery pack, Ghostbusters kind of yeah. looking thing to it. Yeah, it's a nice design and it's totally unique. And initially. You get the like sense it's a different lightsaber altogether, which is awesome. I like that they made it green. Originally, it was supposed to be blue still, but it didn't look it didn't look good outside uh, with the blue sky and the sand and stuff. It was kind of lost, so they changed it to the green, and which is good because if they hadn't, how long does it take for us to get a different lightsaber color? You know what I'm saying? Like Qui Gon could have had a blue one. Mace Windu right. could have he, had a blue one. George could have been like, it's just did. blue and red. You know, like he could <laughs> exactly. have been like, just blue and red. But this one made him go green. And then we get it Qui -Gon opened up the blue. entire yeah. universe it of did. lightsaber colors. Now we have things like even the black ones, white ones, the yellow. yellow. Yep. The Bastila or the exactly. new you know, Ray with her new yellow one. Uh, I mean, all these. Um, interesting characters. different colors yeah and thanks sam jackson for the purple as we mentioned before seriously yeah but that really opened it up even more so yes yeah yeah, yeah i think so too um luke hits some bad guys into the sarlacc pit boba's like enough of this i'm gonna fly over there and, and we gotta kind of get in the i think boba's mindset too right of he did his job he got Han delivered. He doesn't really have to step in here, but I think part of it is that's a Jedi. My dad was I'm killed over by the a Jedi's Jedi. bullshit, essentially. Right. Yeah. I, You're not going to get out of this one. You yeah. I, my, yeah. My dad was, you know, killed by a Jedi. It's time for me to exact my revenge. And this is what we kind of talked about when we talked about Attack of the Clones. When he lands, you know, he does kind of try to shoot at first. He get He gets kind of his gun taken out, but then he's going to try wrapping Luke up instead. You know, he's like, if I yep. can get him wrapped up so he doesn't it, and then I can swing the same him off of there or something. Right. Yeah. So he learns a bit, but it is all for not, you know, he kind of gets knocked down and, uh, Which, once again, can I say it's, Oh, I don't like it. Honestly, when I look back on it, it's kind of a, bit of a disgraceful quote-unquote death to boba i mean he gets knocked out by a blind han who is getting yelled at by essentially a big dog yeah <laughs> Just... well yeah that's you know that's very george lucas isn't it like when we when george with um 
it's played for comedic effect. Boba Fett, you know, is right there, and Chewie is like, it's Boba Fett, and Han's like, Boba Fett, where? Bam! There goes the jetpack. Boom! Into the skin, yeah, and, and down it takes into the just a little knock to set the whole jetpack off into a yes disaster. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That seems a little odd as well. You would think these jetpacks are at least produced a bit better to where you would hope so. I'm so I'm them, never putting one on. That's what I'm saying. I don't. What's the use of the jetpack if it gets shot? <laughs> Which and, and some seems of like a likely things... probability. Some of this, I think, is George for – he either didn't know how big Boba would be, but Boba was pretty big after Empire, and he's just like, let me take your fan favorite and show you he sucks. Like, I feel like that's a very George thing to do too, you know? Oh, this person you yeah, thought it was, was kind really of like great. What he did with the prequel series. He was like, "Hey, you think these are going to be good?" <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you remember Darth Vader, who you thought was pretty badass. badass? He's actually yeah. a whiny kid. He's actually yeah. a little whiny, sand unliking bitch. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, that's you know, it's very George. Um, I, I, I think it's fine, um, because at this point, okay, if you're if you're watching. These movies in release order, you go four, five, six. At this point, Boba Fett's still a nobody. He barely did anything last movie. He he's not doing anything this movie really. He looks cool. <laughs> he looks cool. You know, his design cool. is so incredible. It's like how could you not make him a larger part? Yeah, I guess he was just so focused on what he was doing. Like, okay, because what what do you do? He was with too Boba? focused on the Ewoks. I'll well, tell you what to do with him. What do you okay? Go ahead. Tell me what you do with Boba if they escape. He's still alive, and at that point, is he still just tracking them down? And then you have to take care of the nope. Empire. So that's what I want so to know. At that point, you have it where because you never actually see this agreement that the Empire and Boba are going to be working. So you actually get to see Darth Vader approach boba or boba approach vader and they come to a business agreement where yeah we just want to get these out of here we want to kill the republic we want to wipe out the jedi essentially that's what i want to see but instead we kind of got what we got that's where i would go with it is that we actually see boba and darth come together as a unit rather than what they kind of did in empire as they were working together, but they didn't have the same goals or like, you know what I mean? They didn't, uh, they were together on like a business front, but not actually with the same motivation. That's what I would have liked to see. I think it sounds fun that way but oh I think, god jordan i think for the story wise you have to get rid of boba here because why it sounds fun that you'd see boba and darth team up the main part of the story is getting darth to try to get luke to team up and luke to try to pull those emotional strings on darth and i think that is well, the where... whole thing is we can kind of split that up which i mean throughout the entire film of return uh, at least after that initial opening luke and han and leia all kind of split up so then you could see kind of more on han's side rather than han and leia kind of what fooling around with some ewoks for a while and mm -hmm. and just haphazardly knocking out stormtroopers <laughs> i don't know like i feel like at least then there's a bit of threat like a uh, sneakiness to uh what's going on with han rather than just yeah well the empire could kill him we'll see probably right. not. yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know I, I you know what i'm actually glad he died in that part so that way they could bring him back for what we're about to see and, and i think he gets that redemption in the mandalorian episodes will be well, yeah covering. for sure yeah. Now it all works. Now but it works. Yeah. We're sit I'm sitting there talking with the context of if you're in 1982. None of right this happened. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so Leia kills Jabba and uh then you know they they're all going to escape and get off of Tatooine and 
they're you know luke's gonna go a separate way here for a bit where he's gonna go you know the plan is to go see yoda while the others meet up back up with the um uh the rebel fleet so right after they leave tatooine the emperor actually arrives on the death star 2 and we really get our first real good look at ian mcdermott as uh palpatine and as the emperor since uh, you know, if we're tracking Boba Fett's time frame, this is the first time we've really seen him since uh, Attack of the Clones when we started this. Um, Palpatine, you know, yeah. Yes, yeah. We saw him a <laughs> bit, you know, last time when he had his um, conversation with uh, with Darth, but it was literally like a two-minute or less scene. So this is, you know, um, kind of our first time at, at really seeing this. And then we kind of flash right back to Luke going to Dagobah. And we get Yoda just like a few months after Empire Strikes Back is like on death's door for whatever reason. He lived 900 years, but, you know, those extra six months or whatever was just too much for him. The stress. It was too much of knowing that Luke may fail and fall to the dark side. You know, that was it. It just knocked the wind out of Yoda. Um, I mean, he's looked like he's been 900 since uh, Phantom Menace, but now he actually is 900. So take that into account, Jordan. That's true. You know, th- you joke a bit, but that's probably part of it, right? Is that uh, he was sitting in isolation for so long, maybe not having any worries. I'm not sure how he much zenned he out. Was. I mean, I'm, dude, did you I'm not, not sure. see how cracked out he was? I mean, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, think he had a care in the world. He's just like, me, banging so sticks bang. and stuff. Ah, um, but boop, 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 I'll bang our two. <laughs> but, you know, when it comes to, you know, this point, it, it, one, I wonder, he probably doesn't get a lot of news on Dagobah as it is, right? So he probably didn't have much to worry about until Luke got there. Um, I'm sure this was weighing heavily on him the whole time. But then <laughs> when it becomes actually true and, you know, he has that conversation with with Luke and, you know, Luke decides to go help his friends that, yeah, maybe that does put a little bit on him where he, you know, uh, starts to starts to lose some life. Things start weighing on him a little bit more. The past comes to fruition. Yeah, maybe, he was, lifting, maybe about... he was lifting the X-Wing out of the water and it just took a few months to kill him. <laughs> oh, there we go. I was going to say, all I'm thinking about is the news on Dagobah. You just get like a newspaper. They're like, "Yeah, the swamp monster uh, yeah. ate another dis- droid. Ate another droid. It uh, it pulled down an X wing today." Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's all like reported by like a little bug creature or something. Yes, yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> this, He's uh, like, mm, this was "Nothing's channel- on today." <laughs> this was Channel Seven on Dagobah. Channel Seven. We always go with Channel Seven. Yeah, um lucky number <laughs> the yeah he says luke has to defeat vader in order to become a jedi so while he was calling himself a jedi knight yoda says no uh you have to defeat vader he does confirm that vader is his father this was again confirmation that the audience needed because some of them did not trust what happened exactly last week and to get it from a reliable source like yoda is is pretty good and then yoda does die and we see him you know disappear and i think at this point we now know that for jedi to do that they have to kind of become one with the force but i think back then many people just thought that's what happened to jedi when they when they die because in general, we had seen exactly. two we had seen two where that had happened where it was back to back too yeah so yeah um and then of course we get uh, another one that we'll talk about, but I think just since we're on the topic, that definitely put that thought into everyone's mind. So then it was like, oh well, why don't we ever see a Qui Gon Force Ghost? Yeah, well, that's why because he didn't necessarily kind of just give himself up to the Force, or he you know, he learned how to do that. The canon he did, reason. But, he learned how to do yeah. it after the fact, but never learned how to fully become 
one with the force. He's he, able to do his voice. He he's can't able do to anything talk else. exactly, yeah. but you never see a fully physical version of him. So yeah. who knows though? I mean, maybe if George was still doing this and he, if he did seven, eight, nine, we probably get another special edition where at the end of six, you have Qui-Gon, Anakin, Obi-Wan. Well, Yoda. at that point, we'd probably even have Dooku where he's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, re- I regret everything. <laughs> we'll, I we'll have like an aged uh, CGI version of uh Christopher Lee, you know. I mean, he was pretty already aged at that point. No, I, I meant a like younger. That's what oh, I mean. okay. Like, yeah, you know how they do for like the uh, Martin Scorsese film. Yes, that yeah. came out on Netflix. That yeah, yeah. The Irishman. <laughs> they de-age. Yes. <laughs> um, but Obi-Wan... it'll be like a nineteen-year-old Christopher Lee. <laughs> it's like, like I'm so sorry for. Uh, that or, uh, there's another film, uh, can't remember what the title is, but it's where a demon is like in a box on a train, mm. night of the demon, night of the something. Anyway, forget but it. Anyway, but... Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan meets with Luke and he tells Luke about, uh, Leia being his sister. So this is really like, you know, Dagobah is like information dump right now on, <laughs> in this movie, you know, just, uh, yes, you're his son. Yes. He also has a daughter, and that's also Leia. Like, just boom, 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 to give Luke the information. Because once Luke leaves here, we're hanging out mostly at Endor and the Death Star, and that's it. I was also going to say, uh, once Luke leaves here, he's going to feel real grimy about all the kisses he <laughs> shared with his sister. <laughs> yeah, and we'll you... just kind of forget about him. We won't really bring that all back around. Um from now on, Han is her one and only love interest. <laughs> Let's forget about what we've done in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. Um, and then we kind of jump right back over to the Rebel fleet, and Lando's a general now. Han is a general now. And we get Mon Mothma talking. She's talking about how the Bothans have died to bring them the information that the Emperor is going to be on Death Star 2. Telling them some more plans and stuff that I, I guess where the weak spots are again uh, about, you know, where the shield generator is on Endor. That's the kind of stuff that they're relaying to her. And then, you know, Admiral Akbar talks for a bit and we get news that a strike team is going to land on Endor and take down the generator. And Leia's like, oh, I wonder who they got to do that mission. And Han's kind of like, <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> and they're like, General Solo, are you ready? <laughs> Um, and now and he all brings, of a sudden she cares. <laughs> yes, she he brings Luke, uh, Leia, Han, and Chewie on his team while Lando's going to hang out with Akbar, Nine Numb, all these people to take down the Death Star um, 2.0. 2.0. But yeah, and then we get you know where they land on uh, Endor. Um, Luke starts to kind of have second guesses about coming right he feels vader in the force and he and he knows he maybe shouldn't have come with the rest of his friends yes he realizes that vader may have a lot more um what to call it like weight or um you know, a lot more bargaining options on Luke's side than Luke has on Vader's side because Vader yeah. doesn't care about any of his people. Right. Luke cares about all of his. So it's like, huh, bargaining chips, I think is what I was going for. But, you know, close enough. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> but we get, you know, at some point here, we also get where they get on the little uh, speeder bikes. We get that whole fun chase scene. Um, then we kind of get them split up again, right? Like Leia gets split up and ends up going with the Ewoks and Wicket and Han and Luke kind of have to do, you know, find their way back. Um, and then we have the, uh, you know, Leia meeting all of the Ewoks. And then we have the scene where, you know, the droids, Chewie, Han and Luke end up getting caught in that trap. Uh, which then gets them caught by the Ewoks and really starts, um, you know, setting all that up. 
and then they do like a nice little pig roast with them until yes, they're about Rufio to. gets them to stop. <laughs> and I really Very like nice. this here because, you know, it shows Luke has learned his lessons from Yoda and stuff, right? Yoda's talking last week that you, you know, Jedi's don't use their the Force and their skills to attack, right? Uh, it's always about, you know, different. You know, not, not attacking. And in this, he uses the force to prove to the Ewoks that 3PO is their god. And uh, it's just like a fun way for him to kind of figure out a different way to do it. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like a video game where maybe there's like three ways to defeat something or three ways to get through. And yeah. one of them is like you just run up there and bash them. The second way is you like stealth them, and the third way is like some clever way that you can get through it, and that's what it felt like. It felt like the like clever talking your way through it, option. Or yeah, yeah. It felt like a very Jedi sort of way because yes. that's what even in the prequel series they kind of talk about that a lot. Is like you should be able to talk your way through a situation as a Jedi, not just instantly go to some sort of uh, physical conflict or something, you know. And we have Which we made... see Obi Wan do a lot. Sorry. But, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Obi Wan does do it throughout the entire series. Yeah, as both Ewan McGregor and Alec Guinness. There it is. I knew it was Guinness <laughs> as the beer. Uh, no, just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we have uh, we have Vader talking to the Emperor. You know, a small f fleet has penetrated the shield and landed on Endor. Which is another great line, and you know, Emperor Palpatine's just like, "I knew," um, I and know. he's worried a bit Damn about it. how much involved he is with, I guess, knowing about his son. And I think Palpatine's a little put off by what Vader is putting down here. I can agree with that. Yeah, it seems like. He starts to get the hint that Vader may betray him, which obviously in a couple minutes Vader thinks about doing, and it seems like Palpatine was totally ready for it. So yes, yeah. <laughs> um, we have uh, you know, they get captured by the Ewoks. They get out of it. Um, Luke is going to give himself up. So that way he can get captured at the little outpost that's over there. So that way he can get on the Death Star with his father. So he can kind of draw Vader away from his friends. So his friends can finish the mission there on there. You know, if he's hanging out with them doing the whole shield generator thing, that's going to bring Vader right to the shield generator. It's going to shut all of that plan down like immediately. So pretty smart move again from Luke here. And, you know, Luke's plan is to, again, not fight his father. It's to try to... Try to coerce him into yes. coming back to the light. Make him feel you guilty know? for exactly. leaving for that pack for of cigarettes and never coming done. back. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you took it there, Jordan. And I'm telling you, I'm sure there's people where that just hit home. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know... It, it, it's a fun moment here where we're going to see like, you know, Luke and Vader in the elevator having their conversation and, you know, Vader's trying to suppress it by saying, you know, uh, pretty much saying he's naive. Like uh, there's no turning me back now. You don't know the power of the dark side, you know, that's it. Um, and Luke just has this, I guess, optimism of, and, probably really is naive that he could talk to his dad and get done. Cause really his dad has no attachment to him at this point. He never met him. It's not like it he actually did. Naive, yeah. He actually didn't leave his kid. He didn't know he had a kid until uh, between um, a new hope and empire Four and five. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely think though, the main thing that probably does get Vader in the end is the Obi-Wan relationship that he had. Because that was kind of his only father figure. And then it I feel like he kind of... Because, you know, throughout the initial prequel trilogy, all you kind of see is Anakin wanting more responsibility. Wanting, like, someone to rely on him and all that. So I think he kind of ate it up in the long run. 
And he really wanted to own up to that dad role, whether it was him being the father son sort of will rule the universe or even just like i'll teach you the force i think he kind of just did want that and family i don't know at the end of the day i think it vader was easily talked down well, i mean <laughs> would you rather all right look let's look at it vader doesn't have much of a life right now anyway right like, exactly his life is he is three fourth of a robot at this point and is following the rules of some old politician that doesn't really care about him. Why would you ever take the side of that guy <laughs> exactly, over your right? kid? <laughs> yeah. Who, Especially the kid. If, Cause also, sorry, but Anakin, he always thought of himself as probably the most uh, strong Jedi at the time anyway. So it's kind of like, well, if uh, I'm going to follow anyone or be coerced by anyone, it would probably be his own son, who is now, you know, the little version of himself. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go ahead. And I, I, what I was going to say is, like, and this kid loves him for no reason. No, like, yep. he thinks that they're still good in him. And Vader has shown nothing countless to, times to get that, that that's not true exactly yeah. and i think that's what helps too is like this this guy who i'm following the emperor i'm never good enough for him he's gonna want my son instead of me anyway why would i ever follow what he has to say when i have this kid who just because i'm his dad and i have shown him time and time again that there's no reason to love me like that but he does and i think I was thinking about this yesterday before, and I was like, I got to make sure I bring this up. We talk about the Jedi having said that, you know, attachments are always bad. Anakin was too old and too attached to his mom to train because they were worried about the loss of his mom and being away from his mom would have too much of a negative impact. But that's not true. It wasn't really that that caused that. It was the way they tiptoed and treated him that caused that. And what they lose by saying no attachments is the good parts of attachments. Attachments of, you know, they always say attachments lead to the dark side. It leads to anger. It leads to hate and suffering. But they never, they never think of what the attachments can do to do the opposite. The fact that Luke loves his dad and believes in his dad is what brings Vader from the probably the most evil that people have ever been, right? All the way back. Enough where he's able to join one with the Force and become a Force ghost. Like, he brings his dad like a complete 180. 180, yeah. And it's because of his love and his attachment to his dad. And it shows that the Jedi were wrong all along because... That attachment is what ended up saving the universe. Luke would have lost. Luke was going to lose. Emperor Palpatine is killing Luke at this moment before Vader steps in. And it was the attachment that brought Vader back. And if there, the if, love. That, if yeah. it wasn't there, Which, and, that's another and he just thing goes, they said is that Jedi right. can't love. So exactly. it's another thing. Yeah. And if he goes toe to toe with vader and he loses or whatever then that's it it's it it's over so it was a totally different and and what's so contradictory too as i'm thinking about it is yoda saying we don't use it to attack but you have to defeat vader that's bullcrap uh he was able to do it by showing yoda i don't have to attack like you told me to i don't like you told me don't use it to attack as a jedi i am going to bring him back by doing what I've done this whole movie and not use violence. Like I, I lifted three PO and got out of the whole Ewok thing. My dad would have killed him. Like he did. And the he talked down Jabba and, <laughs> you know, yeah. he, he tried to make a deal with Jabba for the droids. It didn't work. Exactly. He tried to, um, talk to his dad to bring him back. His whole time was, I'm going to talk it through and do this like an HR session where we're just going to use our words and get, <laughs> get through this issue. <laughs> And come to a compromise, a win-win-win, right? 
Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> but you know, so so that's kind of where I was a hypocrite, and the Jedi as a whole are hypocrites, where they say you don't we don't use it to attack, but also you have to defeat Vader, <laughs> or else, yeah, you know, you don't become a Jedi. And what I want to ask you too is when we look at Palpatine and you know how Vader, you know Luke does try to take a swing at him and Vader blocks it. Is it true when those Sith say, if you strike me down, you know, you'll become know, dark become, side? Yeah. Is that true? Because, I mean, that was kind of like when Palpatine wasn't going to go get arrested in Revenge of the Sith. The plan is to then murder him, right? Sam Sam Jackson, Mace Windu is about to murder him. And I don't think he goes full dark side after that. So, I mean, like. It, sometimes it can come out of a place that's not anger. It's like, no, we just need to defeat you because you're you're evil you're, and you have you're to just evil. Die and if we don't no kill you, it. you're just going to keep doing this. Exactly. <laughs> so sometimes I think it's a little too black and white with how that's presented. The Jedi's motives. Yeah, I can agree with that because um, we've seen a couple instances where Jedi have killed people. Obi Wan killed Darth so, Maul, and he that's did what not I'm fall saying. On the dark side. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that with multiple things. I mean, the only one off the top of my head where I'm like, oh, well, that kind of happens right after is when Anakin kills Count Dooku, but that's only when Palpatine's sitting there coercing him to do it, and so, yeah, I I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh Also Leia know. kills Jabba. Yeah, maybe Peter maybe Potter, he's saying maybe he's saying if I put plant this idea in your head, you'll you'll just give in and kill you'll everybody. Believe it. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. It, especially the whole thing of like, see your friends out there, I'm gonna kill them. So why don't you join me? Why don't and you we'll just rule do the it galaxy. And then <laughs> yes. we got this thing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see when I play my go tour playthrough, I guess, how bad that goes. <laughs> Because uh, I've be heard great. some stuff about what you can do. Um, so Yeah, I know that... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I do know something about Karth. I don't know if you know it. Oh, no, I don't think I know that yet. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. What I know is about it. Mission and Zalbar. <laughs> oh, I know that thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but... i um, big fans of you, so good luck, buddy. Yeah, we'll and, see how uh, that goes. Oh, it's sad, so... <laughs> But, um, anyway, but yeah, so that's we're not that's, talking about KOTOR. This isn't the pod KOTOR Awakens. That, that's mostly that, right? I mean, like, you know, Luke is going to give it up. He's going to throw the, his weapon aside. He's going to say, I'm a Jedi, like my father before me. He's going to electrocute it. Vader's going to do like the uh, quadruple Wrestling move. No, I was yeah. going to say quadruple oh. look. <laughs> I thought you were talking about like the big old body slam that he's about no, he to do. He will do that. Yeah, he will do yeah. that. Um, but, you know, he does the constant look back and forth. He does. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. I what don't know. Do I, what do I do? Right. <laughs> Master. Um, but, so, yeah, no. he, he gives it up there, and it, he actually is going to die because for some reason when Palpatine gets lifted, he's not like, let me just stop Force Lightning right now. <laughs> he's just going to keep going until he gets yeah. thrown over the edge, and it's going to end up killing Vader, or else Vader would be like a good guy. Which I also kind of just get confused by that entire thing in general. You'd kind of think that he would stop Force Lightning. And also from the view, it looks like it would shoot at the ceiling, not like up and over his head. Well, I think but... it is shooting up at the ceiling, but it's almost like if you were touching something that's conducing electricity and you're getting it on the back it's end just, too. Yeah, I kind of get what you're saying. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But I'm pretty sure you actually see the lightning shoot up and over Palpatine's head. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, maybe at that point he's but, like, what are you doing? i got to get you now. Yeah, you freaking <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> right. Um, and then Vader's like, oh, don't call my mom that. And just, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a really touchy subject. Yeah. Um, but so then we get, you know, Lando and uh, and uh, Nine Numb and all them in the uh, Millennium, Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Blowing up the Death Star. They get out of there. Luke barely gets out of there in time. So reminiscent of the New Hope scene of Chewie and Solo just, woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
And then we get, you know, the uh, the burning of Vader's body and Tim looking over and seeing his Ding dad. Dong, num, num. Something, something. Da, do, 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 That's the original dong, song. Dong. That's the original nope, song. Nope. Now it's now it's something else. Yeah, now it's the um, celebration that's, song. That's my favorite one is the Mina. Num, num. <laughs> I don't know what the lyrics are, but it works yeah. so well for the Ewoks. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like they could have made that song. <laughs> but I really like that they have, you know, nowadays in the special editions that you see all the places celebrating because really, yeah, that's what you should see, right? I mean, like the, the it brings it the back emperor's down the prequel trilogy, right? You get to see like closes uh, the loop, the yeah. Gargan or Gungans, yeah, uh, and all them as well. That's kind of cool. We it brings agree. it all back down. <laughs> exactly. And that's the end of Return of the Jedi. So where we leave off with Boba here is he's in the Sarlacc pit. We'll see if we learn more about how he gets out of there. What we're looking at next week is... I would assume that if I were to start off the like uh, show, you know, the series, uh, I would just immediately have that be the opening scene. Is Maybe it's like a couple hours later or whatever... Boba fixes his jetpack or a thermal detonator up through the thing or something and just boom, you know, that's how I would personally start it off. But to each throw. <laughs> so what we're going sorry. to look at, that's all right. <laughs> what we're going to look at here is chapter. Well, we're going to look at the very last scene of chapter five because that's where Boba goes over and, Pick, uh, saves Fennec Shand. And then we're going to look at Chapter 9, The Marshal, and Chapter 14, The Tragedy. Uh, those are the ones we're going to look at for next week. Um, so, and, and The Tragedy is such a heavy Boba episode, so that is going to be a lot of fun to get. And the reason why we're watching The Marshal, while you know he doesn't appear until the very end, we're going to follow the Boba Fett armor, too. We're going we're gonna to learn how that got over to Cobb Vance and, exactly. you know, how that's going to get back to Boba. So that's why we're going to pick it up there. So we have two full episodes of really like a last, like 30 second scene of chapter five that we're going to talk about. Right where week. you get the reveal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, then the week after that is just chapters 15 and 16. And then we're caught up to Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett. So it's been a fun journey so far, but we're almost done. Oh, how quickly it comes and goes, you know? It feels like we were just talking about Django and yes, the the ominous scenes where he seems like he could be Boba yesterday, you know? Yep. Had good old Zam and got the, the bounty hunter, you know? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we got well, everybody. Django's uh... head flying and... Ah, <laughs> uh, Mace Windu is still alive. Jeez, we've really came a journey, man. It's... So I'm going to put that in the show notes, too. Chapters uh, 9 and 14 are where we're going for Mandalorian. So those are both season 2 um, that we'll be taking a look at that. So if you want to give us a follow, you can reach us on Twitter at Pod Awakens, Facebook.com slash Pod Awakens, Instagram at Pod Awakens, or email us podawakens at gmail.com. And we will catch you all next week. Woo! Book of Boba Fett. Let's go. <laughs> I have spoken. It's over, Anakin. <laughs>